Welcome. Thank you guys so much for coming over here for the very last session today. Um, so this is session four of a four session course on advisory. Um, and we'll be going over our agenda in just a second. But um, just to introduce myself again, I'm Leslie. And I met you all the very first one, but I haven't seen you since then. How's it been since then? Have you learned new techniques since the first session? Have you guys been at session? Were you guys all at sessions two and three? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Half, of, Half mm -hmm. of it for you? Okay. Okay, cool. That's good. So thanks everyone for coming back. We're excited to have you. Um, uh, we are going to go over a few uh, main topics today. Um, again, we always model the greeting, the sharing, and we'll recap from the last session. And then the two main topics today are going to be fostering the creation of a supportive peer group and then uh, making student data actionable. And then, of course, we're going to do the questions reflection. We're going to do a reflection of all the sessions so we can kind of review what we learned from those um, at the end as well before we have a little special surprise for you before you go to. Um, and just to celebrate the end of the four times, four sessions together. Um, the learning objectives today are a lot, they're long, and there's a lot of words in them, so I'm just going to take me, take me a minute to go over them. Uh, we are going to be ex explain the importance of fostering the creation of a supportive uh, peer group in advisory. We're going to utilize strategies to create an inclusive environment, support introverts, and confront bullying in the advisory classroom. And we're going to implement a variety of formats and techniques to help advisory students take action in response to their academic data. So that word action is really important to me in that last objective um, because it's not a passive, a passive activity for students or a passive review for students. We want to make sure that they're taking action, taking ownership with the data. We're going to model some of those techniques and give you some takeaways for those techniques as well. Any questions on any of the objectives? Okay. So every time that we meet, we always model talking about agreements, which is something that you can do with your students as well, anytime you're about to do some sort of a activity with them. So um, before we talked about the agreements of being present and asking questions, is there anything else you can think of to add to the agreement list? <coughs> okay. okay, sounds good. Okay, so we want to, we're already, you guys are in a circle, so we'll come join you guys in the circle and start with the greeting. Okay, so this greeting um, is a double high five greeting, and there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, today we're just going to do uh, two fives, sorry. I'll sit down too. Um, today we're just going to do two fives. So remember expectations for greetings are that you look the person in the eye and you're each saying each other's name and making everybody feel excited and welcome about being back together. So good afternoon, Savannah. And, and then we pass it around, sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I just do one? I just popped in this one. <laughs> okay. You, 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 can do it, you can do it both. You can do it twice. <laughs> that was fun. Okay. Oh, shoot. Leslie. You're, Kat, you're Leslie. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Kat. Leslie. Good afternoon, Tammy. Um, great. So, um, I'll go ahead and jump into our sharing as well. So, last time you guys set some goals, and I have them for you today in case you forgot what they were. Um, so I'd like you to just read and remember your goal. Nick, I don't have one for you. So Nick, you can think of, I'm sorry. Because we set these goals at the end of last session. So oh. just, just think of any goal you have for this year. Yeah, think okay. of a goal that you set for you with your students or a New Year's resolution or any sort of goal that you might have. Um, and I'm gonna, we'll go around and if you'd be willing, just read your goal and then share with us, have you, accomplished your goal and if yes who or what helped you accomplish this goal and if you haven't accomplished the goal yet um, what was the challenge and what are you doing to like still work towards it okay so I can start with you Katie okay so my goal was to assign 10% of the middle school girls at CGA a community or professional mentor um, during their advocacy period um, and I have not met this goal. Um, I've been working on it, but I'm still kind of making progress in that regard. Um, we have a lot of avenues that are set up for like volunteer match and uh, community partnerships to come in, uh, but it's something that I'm still working toward and need to, need to get there. 
I had a goal to finish a video and reflection for um, a resident educator, and I did that. And I think just having a deadline that I wasn't allowed to not make me do that. I hate it. The other one I was going to implement a lesson um, for learning that cost as it's not a piece for my checklist, and I haven't done that. And I just I used something different. I used a different technology. Um, Right. So one of my goals was to um, have the students complete at least six plays on their playbook, and um, they had done eight of, as of last Thursday. Um, and so uh, Savannah helped me make that happen in the classroom by supporting the students. And then my other goal was to think about uh, buying a new house or reconfigure the house I have. And so that's what I was doing, with, um, and my husband helped me do that. So, did yeah. you buy new or reconfigure? Yeah, reconfigure. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. But we have a good, awesome. Mm -hmm. cool. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. Um, we're just sharing. Were you here? You weren't here at the last session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you can just share with us. Remind us of your name, or remind me of your name, if you would. And then also share if you can think on the spot of a goal that you have um, for your students. Um. Well, my name is Mark Lee Screaming. I'm from Miami. Sorry, I'm late. We are late school. And there's only, there's one goal that I have for my students, and that is for them to actively complete the plays, because for some reason we're having some issues with the plays, and to take their goals more seriously. So I'm just having difficulty with them taking it seriously once they get feedback from the goals or from the learning styles and the job career choices that they should make I want to take it seriously. So that's the biggest goal. Okay. Great, thanks. Um, a goal that I had spoken with my mentor before was to get on to like explore learning. I heard you the technology, so she came up and my mind. And I got them on the back and it went well for some students and some of the students went over the head but it was nice to just get them that technology piece that she recommended. Because I guess most, I don't know if you all have math science, but I guess most piece. Okay, my first goal was to lose 10 pounds. I didn't, but, <laughs> well, no, if you all, well, you may not, but if you all remember, my leg was bothering me. Mm -hmm. We finally figured out it was a herniated disc. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And it got worse and worse. Um, but last Friday, I finally got an epidural to relieve some of that pressure on it. So I'm actually got one more day before it's supposed to be fully and I can go active. So I can go back to that. Um, my, my second goal was my advisory group will identify one academic long-term goal and one personal long-term goal that they would like to achieve by the end of third quarter with short-term short objectives. And one of the advisories is WHOOP, uh, which was a type of goal setting, which was make a wish, what are um, the objectives or how do you, what do you want to obtain, what are your obstacles, and what is your plan. And all of my kids did that. I have, it's more of my eighth graders than my seventh graders because my seventh graders for some reason aren't really into it, but they are actually, one, she has the goal to make at least a B by the end of the third quarter, and she is at a C now, and she is constantly checking her the grade book when I put in grades and going back and redoing work. Another one, the one that was being counterproductive to the lesson, said he will no longer be counterproductive, and he is working very, very hard on that. And so, he's working towards that. So, they are actually will probably meet their goals in the next six weeks. Great, come on. All right. Okay, um, so we're going to move um, on to the next topic, um, which is fostering a um, the creation fostering the creation of a supportive peer group. So you may not be able to foster the entire peer group that's supportive of each other overnight or in this school in the remainder of the school year, but we want to at least focus on the steps that it takes to create that and set it up. Um, so starting with a little bit of 
the research behind this. Um, just a couple reminders, I think well, we've talked about this and we probably know. Um, this research comes from Teaching with the Brain and Mind, it's Eric Jensen. Um, so you, you can know the source in the text here um, if you want to dig deeper into the publication. But just a reminder that social experiences physically alter students' brains. So it's not just that their emotional or their feelings get upset or um, change in, in one way or the other, but that their the brain is actually changed and modified by uh, their social experiences. So for that reason, um, social support makes students healthier. So having positive supports with both peers, adults, as much as they can with other humans uh, makes them overall healthier and more productive and better at their education so are better at their schooling so this is something that we really want to try and spend time focusing on social influence is perhaps the most powerful factor in adolescent decision making so we know too that kids are going to be very um, impacted by what their peers say do and think and encourage them to do and not do um, way much more powerful than motivation of adults far more powerful than motivation of what their future may hold um, so it's it's uh, very uh, powerful in getting them to succeed or not succeed at school and otherwise in addition a supportive peer group is a protective factor against risk behaviors so truancy substance abuse early sexual activity and crime we want to make sure that the social support can influence these activities very strongly um, and a sense of belonging and engagement are correlated with academic and lifelong success. So again, we want to we want to um, foster students who are not only academically successful but are successful lifelong as citizens and productive relationship builders um, throughout their entire lives. Any questions on the research? Okay. Okay. So we are going to practice creating supportive peer groups together by doing some role plays in groups. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to split into two groups and we're going to actually, not right now, but in a moment we'll step back there for a special separation process and we're going to walk around in that area right back there. Um, so I'm going to just come around and whisper in your ear a barnyard animal. Have you guys ever played this barnyard babble game? Okay, it's Super fun. So I'm going to whisper in your ear a barnyard animal and then we will all stand up and go in the back and we're going to close our eyes and you have to make the noise of the animal, okay? And you have to listen and hear all of the other animals that are the same as you and gather with them and form a little group, okay? With eyes closed the whole time. If you happen to open your eyes for a second, I'm not going to be offended. Um, but that's the goal. Right. So okay. especially as you consider asking you to, you know, do an act of things that the kids would really find engaging and fun. So um, while adults, we may not think it's the best way to separate adults, just imagine that we're modeling for the way the kids might interact and think and how they can get up out of their seats and find each other. So mm -hmm. it's a really, it's really interesting for adolescents and younger kids too. Yeah. And it also relates to supporting a supportive peer group because um, sometimes adolescents and kids can feel awkward if you're just like find a partner and they're like Yeah, but I'm friends with her and her and like who am I gonna offend or find a group and one person is feeling left out So it helps. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys your animal Everyone stand up and come on back. And go ahead and just in this area, close your eyes and find your groups by making your noise. So wait, make the noise and walk around? Yep, make okay. the noise and walk around. Oink, 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 I hear a pig over here. Oink, 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 okay. oink, oink, oink. oink, oink. Okay. All right, well done. Okay, so now you have your groups. So um, go ahead and come back and sit next to the people who are in your group. Never table, yeah, one group can grab a different table. 
Okay. So we have the sheep and the pigs, and now we're just going to do a couple of role plays. So you see the scene written up here, and I'm just going to give you guys a couple of minutes to figure out how you want to act the scene out. And I want you to act out the challenge presented and also act out a solution. Okay? So the first scene is there are two students in your class who don't participate. They sit and listen but they're really hesitant to share their own ideas. So how can you encourage them to be more active part of the group? Okay, so go ahead and come up with that, a way to act out that scenario and then how you would handle it. So two students and one teacher? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and act out our scenes. So um, do you guys want to go first? Sure, are we good to stay right here? Well, yeah, okay. that works yeah. for me. Okay, so welcome to Advocacy Advisory today, everybody. Um, hope everybody's having a great day. Um, you know, don't forget about the pep rally to this afternoon. We're all really excited about the big game this weekend, and we're going to make sure that we're all on our best behavior. And jumping right into the question or the sharing today for advisory, we're going to want to share about a time that we had a conflict with a peer and um, how you handled it. So does anybody want to share their idea? Okay. <laughs> well, one time um, I was out on the playground with two of my friends and what happened, one wanted to play one game and one wanted to do something else and they kept asking me to do it and the other one got upset because I chose uh, my one friend and she's like you don't like me anymore and um, I don't want to play with you anymore because you're just a sometimey friend and then what I did is is that when we were alone I went and I said it's not that I don't like you it's just that I wanted to do hers first because it sounded more exciting but you could have joined us again we could have played your game Right. And did you say that you waited until you were alone to handle that? Yeah, because friends? you know how with us seventh and eighth graders, mm -hmm. they hear a little, little thing and then they want to start getting around and mm -hmm. adding stuff to it. So. Right. Well, I really like the way that you um, can identify what you did well in the situation and that you know why that it works with you and your peers. That's awesome. Um, is there anybody else who wants to share their idea? No, well, it's okay because I, I really understand that you're seeing and being an active listener by looking at everyone and making eye talk contact and that you are, um, you know, engaged in what we're talking about. So that's great. And we don't want to make anybody share that doesn't want to. But I'm wondering if that you could maybe think about a way that you could you could explain this on paper. Um, so you could journal about it or write about it and maybe turn it into myself or one of your peers later to share your idea. Okay. And scene. Yay! So, what was the problem with this group? She didn't want to share. Okay. Yeah, maybe not a huge problem, but it's just a situation that the teacher faced. And what was the solution that the teacher used? Writing. Exactly what all right, one of the ideas you made sure. Okay. Share it, write it down, and show it to you. Okay, perfect. Great, let's see you guys' scene. Okay. Hey, you do yours. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so this is day one. Welcome to, or one, one of the days, sorry. Welcome to advisory. I'd like you guys to share about, you know, a positive experience that's happened. Think about a positive experience that's happened. We're going to ask the class to share. Five minutes later. Does anyone want to share? Okay, no one wants to share. So, uh, the next day, the day two, because I know we're silent students. All right, again, we're going to share about a positive story, da da da, the same intro. And then this time. Uh, I think the class would love to hear about that. I forgot I was actually not in class. You <laughs> actually want to hear what I'm saying. There's a, that's a really interesting story. You should share that with the class. Is it, would anyone like to share the stories? Um, yes, please. I'll share my story because you said it was really great. <laughs> Thank I'll you. Share my really creative story. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, what was the solution that this teacher had over here? 
kind of coach in individually to help build some confidence. Building confidence. Reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. Great idea. That was different. Did you guys have anything else or was that? We had talked yeah. about like, uh, yeah. like doing like a think pair share. Like just because okay. it is a lot of the, not all the time, but a lot of the time it is about confidence. Mm -hmm. So like if you can vouch your idea and somebody can tell you like, that's a good idea or help you refine it then you feel better about mm -hmm. sharing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you know, we also had uh, all right, where all the students write everything, and instead of them sharing their own work to remove that in theirs, and some of them, I tend to shuffle all the papers mm -hmm. around and then give the papers to different people, mm -hmm. and they read somebody else's response, and that's what I did. Okay, yeah, they just have to read off the paper. Okay, great ideas, super helpful. Cool, okay. All right, we are on to our next role play. There are three, okay? Oh, and here's some tips that actually go with this one. So you guys gave about three or four really great solutions. Here's a couple more. Um, it says here that you can, as a group, discuss, dis, like just talk about why it's great to participate. Um, how does including everyone's voice make our advisory better? And that can sometimes help with the students who are always talking because sometimes when they're always talking and then the teacher doesn't call on them, they don't realize that they're always talking. That's just what they do. And so they might feel a little bad not getting called on, so having this conversation might make them understand um, why the teacher might not always call on them when they raise their hands. And then don't force participation, but you can encourage it. If a student passes, you might just come back and give them a second chance later in case they've come up with something. Make sure you allow students some quiet time. This teacher in the skit demonstrated quiet time and think time um, before you require participation. Try different formats for participation, oral, in pairs, small groups, written, physical. So those were the ideas you guys threw out. Have your students set and reflect on individual participation goals. You might, you know, have them set a goal of today I'm going to share two things or today I'm going to, you know, participate once. And then ask the group to encourage everyone to participate. <coughs> I've heard from half the group, is that enough? And the rest of the group might say, no, we want to hear, you know. And sometimes when peers chime in, that can help too. Okay. All right. Now we're going to look at another role play. This one says, students in your advisory class are hesitant to share their thoughts, similar. You think it's because there's one student who tends to vocally criticize the others. How can you confront this issue? Okay, go ahead. Let's have, let's let's have this group go first and share with us your situation. I don't, oh, okay. I don't like what you're saying. Oh, oh, I don't like what you're saying. <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, the teacher says she didn't care. <laughs> That's silly. And I would give this note to my teacher at some point during the day later. Okay, this is day now day two. Well, the live in class. Um, we are going to continue to talk about sensitive subjects. And let me remind everybody of the rules again. What is said in advising stays in advising. And what everybody says is important. And because it's important enough for them to say it, so it's important enough for us to hear them. And you can't tell the person that they shouldn't feel that way or they're stupid for feeling that way. Those are their feelings and accept their feelings. And Nick, I need to talk to you before we get started. Okay, so everybody go ahead and sit in your appropriate seats, which is in our round table circle, and I'll be right back. My understanding that you are staying in group that what you're saying is stupid or dumb. How would you feel if somebody said that to you? If I, you told me something and it was important enough for you to say it. And I said, you know what? That's stupid. That's dumb. Why are you saying that? How would that make you feel stupid? Why? You would be mad. How do you think your classmates feel when you do that? Probably bad. So, why would you want to make that bad? 
about communication and that if the person felt like uncomfortable they could talk to the teacher and just slip her a note mm -hmm. so that she could feel like heard and not on the spot. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. All right. How about you guys? Okay. <clears throat> I'm the narrator. Okay. This is a this is a student and teacher conference taking place outside of advisory. Oh, you're gonna do that, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, you know I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Jean. Jean. Um, I'm calling Laura. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Jean, um, I like how you always participate in class and you want to share, but we need to talk about some of the things that you are sharing within the uh, classroom setting. Um, can you tell me why you made that statement? Um, advisory? Well, it's my opinion, and we're supposed to express our opinions. It's a free country, and so I'm expressing my opinions. Well, and that's great that you're expressing your opinions, but there was also, was it appropriate? Well, I, I mean, I don't know how you would say it was not appropriate, because it's me and my opinion, and I'm expressing it. But what are our confines of the classroom when we talk? I mean, I wasn't shouting. Well, it's not so much as shouting, but exactly what. See, we don't have a specific here, so it's really hard to yeah. and I'm narrow in. I'm getting off. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard to narrow in on what would. Yeah. But, and you're uh, right. <laughs> Part of our goals were to make sure that everybody could feel safe and contribute. And I guess by my saying my opinion, maybe it made someone feel like they could share their own. Well, was there a way that you could share your opinion that didn't offend other people's sensibilities? Because not everyone is as open as you are. I mean, she wouldn't have an answer to that, except to say that, <laughs> that, that that would be just, how could you not listen to her opinion? But um, <laughs> to, what I would hope she would say is yes. I can maybe be a better listener because when I'm a listener, I learn things about other people and it's not always about me. And wouldn't that be nice if I got to know my classmates instead of just being the one who wants to say everything. And it's nothing wrong with giving your opinion. It's, remember when we talked about it's not so much what you say, but how you say it. You need to take others into consideration. Thanks, Sammy. I think my life is going to be totally different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay. Okay. And so you saw this teacher handled it in a similar way. Like you guys pulled the student aside and had a conversation. We also pulled the student aside and had a conversation. Okay. All right. So a couple of tips here. This is sort of like a bullying situation. So you may find many different forms of bullying in your class. And here are some tips for... Um, handling it. So let's just go around and have each person read one. Nick, would you mind reading the first bullet point for us? Create an environment and set and hold the group accountable to the norms they choose. Okay. Great. Okay. Go for it. Okay. Hold a community meeting where you discuss the importance of respect and not putting each other down and encourage the group to hold, uh, hold one another accountable. And that's kind of exactly what you did. Um, at the beginning of your advisory class on day two, before pulling him aside. So, that was a good example. Provide opportunities for the bully to connect positively with peers. Okay. Have students share anonymously how it makes them feel when others put them down. Hmm. Uh, provide opportunities for the bully to connect positively with peers. Okay, that's a repeat. Do you mind reading one more for us, Kate? Oh. Oh, sorry. sorry have, have a one-on-one -on -one intervention with the bully to hear her perspective on her role in the group and help her set goals. Okay. Provide opportunity for restorative group healing 
after norms have been uh, disregarded. Okay. Mm. Um, and an example of that might simply look like sitting in a circle and giving an opportunity to share what happened, what was the harm done, how did we feel about it, how can we make it right, and just sharing our um, feelings in a restorative approach format um, and let peace circle. Okay? Any questions? All right, so this is our last one. Um, and this is a slightly different situation. We have your advisory students just don't seem to enjoy each other's company. What can you do to help them form a more solid bond? Okay, I'll give you just a couple of minutes to come up with one last scenario. Okay, all right, sounds good. Let us see this time, let's have this group go first. Okay. Um, we're at the beginning of um, advisory class and we're going over the rules and one of the rules is, now remember, you know everybody doesn't get along, so you don't have to agree, you don't have to like each other, but you do have to respect each other, okay? So, Katie and Jean, I want you to, to do work together. Oh, no. Well, it's going to be a fun activity because it's sort of a competition because with all the other groups, we're going to see who can actually come up with a solution. You can't anymore with her? Well, let's try it for a little while, okay? So, you have this popsicle stick. You need to bounce it on the end of your finger from this end. Okay. And it has to balance on the tip of your finger, okay? Here's your popsicle stick. Here is some items that you can use. Now remember, you can't be touching it like this. It has to balance by itself, and these are the only things you can use, okay? So, well, I guess we gotta work together because we're kind of working on solid bond here. Um, <laughs> let's try to balance. And then, of course, they try different things. Okay, maybe if we try to put one of these on here. Okay. Like that oh, you know idea. what I like about we oh. two are working together? Mm. It's really cool. Good job. You too, Jean. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Yay. All right, so what was this teacher's solution? Put in a situation where they have to work together mm -hmm. so that they can see that they're able to, because their communication. Mm -hmm. It might be a little bit, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, this is, yeah. what you gotta do. Okay. And that's exactly what happened when we did the marshmallow spaghetti. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All the ones that are, were polar opposites together, and they actually were the ones that built the highest um, spaghetti marshmallow mm. tower. That's so cool. it started twisting itself down, okay. and that was hilarious for us. Yeah. I had this happen to me a couple of times in college. I just remember my college roommate freshman year was not the girl I would have picked for my freshman roommate. You know what I mean? Like, the first day I met her, I just looked at her and I was like, she has weird shoes. Like, that's all I remember. And she just would not have been the person I would have picked. But by the end, she was my best friend. And now, like, 10 years later, she's coming to my wedding. So, and then in summer camp, I was in charge of matching up the counselors to work together. And I put the two, um, I matched up all the counselors. And then after I matched them and assigned them, I got a note that had been in my box, but I didn't see it, that said, please don't put me with so-and-so. And I had put those two together without knowing that they hated each other. Um, and then at the end of the two-week sessions, those two counselors who had to live together and counsel a cabin of kids together, for the whole week, we're like great friends. Um, so sometimes, yeah, exactly what you're saying, putting the two most unlikely pair together and giving them a specific task, like that's the thing. Giving them a specific task of something that they need to work out, really surprising things can happen. So thanks for that example. Okay, let's see you guys. Um, so we are, I'm gonna play teacher, I'm gonna play student. So we're going to do some quick fire acknowledgements to end our day. And so you'll start by acknowledging somebody in the class. And then once you get acknowledged, you acknowledge somebody else and then you sit down. Nikki, I would like to smile. I really appreciate your ideas as you've been contributing to our team. Um, Marquise, I want to acknowledge you for Helping me with my math today. Oh, well done. All right.
quick fire. That's good. Cool. So what did you guys notice that this group did? They did compliments. Mm -hmm. It was, we used to do that in the morning, compliment circle. Okay. They got until then we had to switch up when it got to, I really like your shirt. I really like your shoes because everybody was doing that because mm -hmm. we did it every day. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So what oh, effect? Good. Yeah, go ahead. Well, what do y'all do? Because you know, you do that when that happen, that starts to happen. Do you like? I don't know what, what I do it often enough for them. We do acknowledgments like, every day. But when I do like quick fire, when it's like every single person right. gets acknowledged mm -hmm. and every single person gives an acknowledgement, I maybe do it once a month. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't. But the other like the acknowledgments we do every day is usually like five kids are giving that acknowledgement, so it's not. So it's the ones who really have something to mm -hmm. say. Okay. But, we, but we try to just make it specific because the one that drives me crazy is kids want to say, I want to acknowledge Mr. Whatever, my mom, for not getting mad at me when. Oh. And I was like, that's not an acknowledgement. So I'd like you to you know, distill what's the quality that they've shown. Have they shown patience or understanding? So they're good about correcting that for each other, and that they don't ever do the acknowledge your shirt or whatever. Because well, if this was we did this was a, not acknowledgement but a compliment, because the class I had it was I mean, they were just constantly at each other. It's like brothers and sisters. You know how they become. Mm -hmm. And when it got to that where they I like your shoes, I like your shirts, then I would tell them at the end of the day, okay. Tomorrow when we do our, um, our appreciations, I want you to think about what somebody did today that you want to think that you want to say that you really liked or that you really appreciate. So then they have a whole day and then we come in the next morning. So it, I just give a specific topic. Good idea. Cool. All right. Um, I thought you guys did a great job coming up with great ideas. Um, here are a few more tips for creating an inclusive environment. Um, you can start by just creating norms as a group and check in on them regularly, okay? Every, you could do it every day as a routine or you could just, when you see that it's not working out, you might just remind them, hey, what are our norms? Um, so that people remember. Using energizer and team building activities often. Play is really important. Um, it can kind of help people reset and set a different tone and mood. Consciously create chances for students to get to know one another. Um, oftentimes they don't like each other just because they don't know each other. So matching them with someone they don't know as well can help break some of those presumptions that they have about the other person. Uh, provide opportunities for students who don't normally connect to work together and explore commonalities. Ask the group to reflect on cohesion and group dynamics. You might just have a circle one day and talk about it. What makes a solid group? Um, what, what qualities do you notice? How can we enhance those qualities in our group? Um, and even just talking about how conflict, what role conflict has in relationships and that that is a normal part, but that doesn't mean that we have to live in that state of constant conflict and how to handle it when it does arise. And then create routines where students appreciate and celebrate each other, just exactly what you guys showed us. And welcoming new students um, and recognizing when a student isn't there. I've seen a couple times when I've been observing advisory classes that um, the advisory class is like the perfect element for a new student to get connected. You're sitting in a circle, people get structured opportunities to share and get to know each other. So this is a really good opportunity, but I have seen it where new students get completely overlooked, even in the advisory. So I guess it just takes the extra reminder or being intentional um, when you have a new student to help them become a part of the group as quickly as possible. And it really helps when a teacher is facilitating that for them. Um, yeah, and then just teaching the group to recognize when another person isn't there and reminding them to encourage their friends like, hey, we missed you, something like that. Okay, does anyone have any thoughts or comments to add to any of these? Yeah, you guys touched on them very nicely. 